Welcome back everyone to the next installment of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. We only have four students left to build relationships with, so... Let's go ahead and take care of the next guy after Leon, Hifumi! Let's spend some time with Hifumi. I know I look like I'm all about the cutting edge, but I have a profound love for retro games, too. Let's begin my four-part history of electronic games. Part 1, Ancient Babylonia. Oh boy. I listened to Fumi's half-obsessed ranting for longer than I would have liked. <laughs> Yay. Alright, President. It's Fumi, like listening I think... to you about Jojo. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, son of a bitch. Um, where's that cutesy anime stuff? Astro Boy doll? Probably. <laughs> so you thought this would please me, huh? You thought this. This would. Jesus. I guess. I get the impression me. that he liked it. Oh, he did like it? Yeah. I thought he was mad. <laughs> no, it makes a. That... It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see quality in you, Mr. Naegi. True quality. Mr. Naegi! And that's why. I have decided to present to you my lecture on the nature of fan fiction. If we're going to be friends, you must be fully informed. I will permit no fanfic bigotry whatsoever. Oh, uh, well, I guess I'm out. <laughs> bigotry. I don't think I have any fanfic bigotry. I mean, I don't really know anything about that kind of geeky stuff anyway. Uh-oh! <laughs> See? There it is! To you, fanfic equals geeky, right? But is that all that word is worth? Huh? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> but that's okay, because I take the word geek as a compliment. For you see, there is nobody on Earth so full of knowledge as a geek. Yes, indeed. In a sense, a geek is like an expert. That's right, a total expert. Ever heard of Best Buy's Geek Squad? You think it's a misnomer? Because it's not. A successful musician must necessarily be a music geek. A good movie theater, a movie director is a movie geek. You see, it's those experts, those geeks, who open up the world to others. So when you say that writing fanfic is geeky, that's it. I'm you're sure of it. <laughs> you're recognizing us as true experts. Okay, so, um, what exactly is fanfic then? Here we go. Oof, super direct question for the win, or FTW, I mean they wrote it FTW. Mm -hmm. Basically, we all have different kinds of stores and events, right? These are where groups of, <laughs> of holy warriors sell their own stuff based on games, comics, anime, everything. And the stuff those people make is fanfic? Well, only the doujinshi, but otherwise... <laughs> comics are the most comic creation, but it also includes games, music, and even merchandise. Uh, that is definitely true. Actually, uh, Vice has gotten a couple of, uh, like, sort of, like, doujin games, like, uh, Crazy Power Disc, which is mm. amazing. <laughs> and, um, mm. I have mm. Ragnarok Battle Offline, which I don't know if you played, but that's pretty I think too. you, I think you were playing that on the way to something one time. I think you might have been playing that in the car. By the way, there's a name for when a group of fanfic creators come together. Specifically, it's any organized group that comes together to release their work. A group of that comes together to release their work. I was gonna go for a convention, but since they're all geeks, I'll go with Square. Ha 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 ha! Is it a circle? <laughs> it sure is. Of course you knew that. I mean, it's only common sense. Ugh. Yeah, that's so like. Oh god. I certainly hope you don't expect me to explain such common sense topics every time. Well, like I said, I don't know too much about this stuff. Without a doubt. This goes well beyond I don't know too much. Mm -hmm. But I guess I can't blame you. The propaganda never touches on that, so as a fanfic ambassador, by the time I'm done with you, you'll be itching to buy a premium pass to the next fanfic con. <laughs> right? Obviously, he's excited, but... <laughs> That's it for today. I hope you're excited for your next lesson. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for the two of us. I'm kind of scared to see what the future has in store for the two of us. Handiwork. That was scary. More like fandy work. After we're done, I headed back to my room for a while. All right. Oh, that's right. It's a holiday. I can meet with them again. Oh? 
So, you want to be around me, eh? That means you must have realized that I have certain powers. <laughs> yes, that's right. My greatest power is my ability to negate the powers of others. Oh, so you're that little bald kid or whatever in X-Men 3? <laughs> I've never actually used it in a fight yet, but I'm not worried, because whatever abilities they have, all I need is my power of negation. You know, that actually is a pretty devastating power if you're teamed up with somebody. Nafumi cornered me and made me take part in his delusion. <laughs> Alright, I guess he grew closer. So let's give him that Astral Boy again. I think it's my last one, though, so I'll have to look for something else after that. Oh, I have the Demonic Princess Angel, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now then! This time, would you like to learn about one of my many legends? Your legends? <laughs> Naturally. You don't become the ultimate fanfic creator without a few legends sprouting up around you. One such legend is how, in middle school, I was able to convince the school to create a fanfic club. Here we go! And from that day, I exposed myself and my fanfic to the world at large. By the way, do you happen to know what all my work is based on? Sorry, no idea. Yes, indeed. Well, surely you've heard of the highly acclaimed anime, Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess. Well, I don't know how to pronounce star in the middle unless I actually say star. Hmm. Now, you might think hmm. that that sounds totally hmm. cliche, but you would be wrong! I didn't simply copy the Pretty Girl Princess Piggle style, I took a total meta sci-fi <laughs> approach. <laughs> My perspective was seen as quite odd, of course, but if you really look at what I was doing, my version of Princess Piggles was the total antithesis of the new wave sci-fi <coughs> movement. In fact, it was my response to J.G. Ballard's speculative fiction stylings. Here we go! Bwee. Ah, my geekdom is leaking out again. I apologize. So That's gross. Seen. It kinda is. Anyway, unlike most fans, I never saw Princess Piggles as your typical moe anime. Yeah, I definitely got that impression. I was always a fan of pure Glastonbury, whatever the hell the name was. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? No More Heroes? Oh, yeah. Whatever those five, like, Moe girls were. And, like, you could see the anime opening sequence for them mm -hmm. in two, and it was, like, kind of uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> but I can't believe you were able to single-handedly... Oh, oh, oops. <laughs> oh, no! His kingdom was affecting me after all. But I can't believe you were able to single-handedly persuade the school to let you make a club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's because I bribed them with a cut of my profits. Profits? <laughs> and I've only gotten better at it. I'm blowing up! Now then, up till now, I've always focused on taking part in Princess Piggle's single setting events. Single setting? Mm hmm. It's when a circle gets together to come up with a project or event focused on only one show or series. So a Princess Piggle single setting event would only allow works involving Princess Piggle, see? On the flip side, there's no restriction on the number of properties, you know what that's called? A single setting event only allows material from one show or series, and the opposite of that is when anything is allowed from all property. Fan jam sounds pretty good, but I'm gonna go with free for all. The opposite of the single setting event, is it just called a free for all? That's absolutely right. There are actually plenty of free for all events every year, and yet. You know nothing! More and more slackers are showing up with no idea what fanfic really means. It's so annoying! So in order to crush these peons with all my might, I'm going to start taking part in more free-for-alls. Crush them? That doesn't sound very friendly. I don't participate in these events to make friends. And I cannot forgive those lazy bastards. And don't tell me to ignore them. If you let some little wimp survive, you'll regret it later. Play any RPG where the villain spares the hero when he's level one. And what happens? Boom! Dead! I mean... Yep. <laughs> That's like all of them. <laughs> I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. Mm -hmm. Is he saying he's the villain then? Uh, the little wimps he's crushing are the That's heroes? That's kind of funny, actually. It's a dog-eats-dog -dog industry where only the most brutal survive. Oh, but don't worry. I'm going to start you off easy by getting you involved in some simple cosplay action. Honestly, that sounds like kind of upper-end stuff. Mm. Unless you're buying a costume, in which case it becomes ultra-expensive. Huh? I'm going to get involved? Wait, did you say cosplay? Ah! You're a pretty good-looking guy. If your costume were decent enough, I might even let you work my booth. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could even net yourself a magical girl harem. Kylie. Yes, indeed. So with that in mind, let's change the world of fanfic together. What does that even mean? <laughs> Alright, cool.
I probably looked like I was running away as I went back to my room. <laughs> my god, Makoto's ready for none of this. Powers of Negation. Presence. I don't think you'll be able to finish everyone. We'll see. Demon mm. Angel Princess figure, like, come on. You're gonna you're gonna need like two more dates. Oh, it is pickles. You're gonna need like two more dates hmm. with Kyoko. Ugh. Er, I mean, I guess it's okay. <sighs> anyway, if you wanted to hang out for a while. Yay! <laughs> Makoto? What's wrong, Hifumi? Hey, wait, he called me Makoto! It hurts! What hurts? Are you okay? <laughs> You're really... Uh, sweaty. I'll go get you some medicine. Er, wait. What kind of medicine do you need? Coke? Huh? Say what? Coke! Diet Coke! Bring me some Diet Coke right now! Whoa, he just pulled a total 180. But I don't think I've seen any Diet Coke here in the school. I suppose. I, I know, I've looked all over. Say what? And now I'm going through Diet Coke withdrawal. Withdrawal? <laughs> if only I'd mastered the Hypno-Eye technique. Then I'd take over Monokuma's brain and use him to go get me some Diet Coke. But I never did learn that one. You got lucky this time, bear. So, uh... Bear. Say what? I can't take it anymore! I would literally murder everyone in here for a can of Diet Coke! <laughs> Whoa! If only Monokuma had that as one of his motives. Oh my god. Don't say stuff like that. You're gonna get through this, man. You're gonna get through this. You know nothing! Oh yeah. You could say that because you don't understand the glory and splendor of Diet Coke. <sighs> Diet Coke is... A friend to all mankind. A single sip and your body melts like butter. It's the kind of high nothing can match. It clears my mind. Nothing can. Oh, it clears my mind and even the most boring conversation sounds like a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> I knew I was going through withdrawal. Am I hallucinating now? Yeah! <laughs> Away, vile spirits. I cast thee out. Hifumi, calm down. <laughs> it's like, here come the auditory hallucinations. That voice. <laughs> ah, Princess Piggles, it's you. S snap out of it, man. <laughs> the princess told me to snap out of it. <laughs> you can't let Diet Coke beat you. you You're it. right. I won't lose. I'm a strong boy. I can endure this for you, my princess. Oh, now let's play tag. On. Hooray, hooray, tag, you're it. Oh my god. Squealing like a little girl, Hifumi ran off to who knows where. Um... He's gonna be okay, right? Yeah. He'll be fine. For sure. For serious. Wow. Bye. I headed back to my room. Cosplayers these days are totally ignorant of the hist origin, the history, the significance of their hobby. And if you don't know your history, you can never have a complete cosplay experience. So, Mr. Nagy, prepare for a gloriously detailed history of the cosplay world. Now, in 1955... I listened to Fumi's half of his ranting. Oh boy. Again. Yay. So where's that princess? Boom. <laughs> I was once a ruthless ubermensch, but Mr. Naegi has awakened my heart through the power of friendship. May I call you my master? What is thy bidding, my master? Seeing if we so pleased with something I gave him, creep me out. A lot. Hey, Mr. Naegi? Yeah, what's up? 
I feel like you're worthy of my trust, you know? You're the only one I can confess to. <laughs> I've reached my limit. I need to get out of here. Right now. But, hey, hey, come on. Don't talk like that when you've got that creepy grin on your face. <laughs> I need to see her. I need to get to a TV. I need to see the real Princess Piggles. I love how, like, that's as real as it gets. What does he mean, real? She's a cartoon character, but now might be a bad time to bring that up. <laughs> Listen, don't get so upset. I'm it's sure like you'll see too. her... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll see her again really soon. Miku is love. Miku is life. You'll see your... Um, what was it? Something Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess? Without a doubt. Something Angel? Something Angel? No, nothing. How dare you insult the princess like that? Say her name right, swine! Her official name. Uh, what was it again? I know it was definitely something Angel. Dharma. Oh, now I remember. The full title is Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, right? <laughs> it's actually Demon Angel Star Pretty Pudgy Princess, to be precise. You left out the star. Like, that's like freaking The Simpsons. How do you spell ACDC? ACDC? No, -uh, I forgot the lightning bolt. Shut up. But I suppose I'll let that slide. Thanks. But jeez, Hifumi, you really love that anime, huh? Mm-hmm. Of course. She's my guiding angel. She opened my eyes to life. How very sad. Before her, I didn't have a single friend. I was just a mild-mannered boy who liked to draw. I heard everything I touched. I was a model young lad who fell to the dark side. Capital D, capital S, Star Wars Dark Side. For example, sometimes a nicey-nice type girl would come try to talk to me, right? That's it. You I'm know, sure of it. be nice to the weird dorky kid, and I'd scream at her, You're such a hypocrite! <sighs> I'd just yell right in her face and make her cry. Man, I love doing that. That's awful. He probably traumatized that poor girl. <sighs> but by total chance, I happened to catch an episode of Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess one day. At first, I felt nothing but contempt for it. I thought it was just another magical girl anime. But... However, after that, she came to me in my dreams. Your dreams. <laughs> I dreamed that I went on date after lovely date with Princess Piggles. It was so much fun. When I woke up and realized it was a dream, I got depressed, but I also realized I was in love. I wanted to experience the sensation again, so I started buying all the Princess Piggle stuff I could. However... Unfortunately, in the show itself, the princess never falls in love. So as much as I wanted to, I never got to see her face filled with love the way I did in my dream. Well, that's okay. Just go to the artist and ask him to draw it that way. <laughs> the face it's she made when like... she was in love was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. Yes, indeed. So, filled to the brim with my overflowing affection for the princess, I decided to draw that face myself. There you go, even better. Mm-hmm. I was consumed with passion, and I finished one Princess Piggles project after another. You know, that's actually really depressing, so the only reason that he's, um, the ultimate fanfic is to, like, compensate for his, like, just so emptiness. That, yeah. yeah. I was so happy with the results, I decided to put it up on my personal website just to see what happened. So he, like, he already did say he liked to draw, mm -hmm. but he might not have necessarily been in the fanfic itself. <laughs> And it was an instant success. That was the moment I was reborn as a true fanfic creator. So that's why, huh? Uh -huh. I was so happy. I had no idea there were other people on the planet who felt the same things I had. I can't thank her, I know that. So instead, so I'll ball up all my love and affection and use it to do incredibly embarrassing things to... Uh, well, <laughs> pity is gone, man. It's <laughs> out the window. Yeah, I think he missed the mark by a mile. But maybe I'm better off for hearing what he had to say. I think I understand him a little better now. She's still developing as a woman, you know, and I can keep developing her. I'm gonna press X. <laughs> and maybe understanding her just a little better is good enough. Good night, everybody! Delusion! Delusion. <laughs> yep! I parted waves with Hifumi and went back to my room. You have 37 trip tickets. Yeah. Hmm. You want to hear what I have to say, huh? Well, what would you like to talk about? Comics? Video games? Anime? Collectible figures? Take your pick. Games, please. Alright, let's give you more of that princess. I think 
think he already has enough of her. No, he doesn't, clearly. He just established that last time. I mean, I guess it's okay. Anyway, if you wanted to hang out for a while... Mr. Naegi! He's like the soon there equivalent of, like, just Buddy. Like, uh, I guess it's okay. It's not like I'm overjoyed with this... Baka. Alright, hi there, Mr. Naegi. It's kind of embarrassing, but there was something I was hoping to talk to you about. Is this it? <laughs> yeah. yeah! I'll be waiting in my room. Come as soon as you can. Without another word, Hifumi ran off. I wonder what's going on. To go out of his way to invite me to his room? What could he want to talk to me about? I do what Hifumi asks and head straight for his room. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Nagy, to my secret flower garden. So, what did you want to talk about? Is it about Princess Piggles again? <laughs> Piggles? No, who cares about her? What do you mean, who cares? I thought you cared. Like, a lot. Oh. Um... Oh, well, maybe I misspoke. It's just that I don't have room to think about her right now. See, I was kind of starting to think about, just maybe, creating something original. Original? Hmm. It's actually been in the back of my mind the whole time I've been doing fanfic. Fanfic is amazing, don't get me wrong. It's a way to connect people to a shared dream, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I think I have more to offer. I'm ready for the challenge of creating that dream myself. I was thinking, if I could create something that might save someone the way the princess saved me... Here we go! I want to create a masterpiece that will astound a mainstream audience. I only watch anime on the weekend, and I only really know the most popular comics. I want to try and make something that has the same reach as stuff like that. I guess what I really want to do is create something that other people will make want to make fanfic of. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll still keep making fanfic myself. That's my life's work, after all. But if that can coexist alongside original work, that's like the best of both worlds. So that's your dream? <laughs> what? A dream? When you put it like that. Ah, stop. You're embarrassing me. But having a dream to work toward is really nice. I'll be cheering you on. In private. <laughs> no, Mr. Nagy, in private is unacceptable. Yes, huh? indeed. I want you to become my assistant. That's right, a legendary assistant slash historian. I feel as if... Oh man, how cool is that? You'll be like my own personal narrator. Hmm. Long ago, hmm. there was a man named hmm. Fumi Yamada. He was an incredibly famous fanfic creator. His grandpa went up to the mountain to cut and cut and cut and cut. <laughs> His grandma spent her day washing clothes, washing pants, washing all kinds of stuff. Here comes a rare giant peach down the river. Grab it. Sell it to the highest bidder. Is that me? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I just got a little carried away at my latest plot. That's what that was? <laughs> anyway, I'll be counting on you to give the world a play-by-play -play as I ascend into godhood. Um, I mean, if I'm successful. Aha! I'll be counting on your unique perspective as my friend. I'm glad I got to learn about Hifumi's dreams. I feel like I've come to understand Hifumi a lot better. I think we've finally become friends in the truest sense of the word. Yay. Alrighty, let's take a look at the next date on our list. Taka! Sounds good! If it were anyone else, no way. But I don't mind sharing some of my valuable time with you. Okay. Taka was nice enough to give me some of his valuable time. I love those messages. Okay, what would a guy like him want? I might just have to stick with food. Like, friendship bracelet? Hero. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with, with the food. I don't know, man. I see! Hmm, maybe I was wrong about you, Makoto. Let's continue to deepen our relationship, shall we? Does that mean you liked it? Hmm. Hey, Makoto, as long as we're talking, let's really talk. What do you say? Huh? Oh, sure, that's fine. Excellent. You hear me? Then let's get down to brass tacks and find out where we stand on all the big issues. So, what should we discuss? Politics? The economy? International affairs? 
Wait, hold on. Instead of a big serious discussion, can't we just have a normal conversation? That's the best way to learn about people, I think. What do you mean by a normal conversation? Um, well, for example, what do you like to do in your spare time? Listen to me! Study, of course. I'm a student, aren't I? A student must be studying professional. Must be a studying professional. And of course my duties as a chairperson of as the chairperson of the morals committee keeps me quite busy as well. You understand? It's my duty to foster an environment in which we can both all focus on our studies. Okay, but what else? Like when you're at home, or you just have some time to kill. Hmm. If I have time to kill, I study. I see. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, my turn. Makoto, what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, you know, just normal stuff. Watch TV, play video games. Huh? <laughs> and this helps you study how? This is amazing. No, it's not about studying. It's just for fun, you know? That's wrong! But doing things just for fun serves no purpose. There must be more to it. You wouldn't spend your val valuable time doing something useless, would you? He could assist all he wants, but in the end... Playing maybe... video games is completely useless. Yeah, Danganronpa. But maybe there is good reason. Like getting into something and talking to people about it. So maybe... Seriously, just for fun. <laughs> you know how it's useful. It helps you. Uh, it helps give you something to talk about with other people. Something to talk about. Like when you see something awesome on TV or some awesome game, and you want to share it with someone. Like uh, let's play, for example. You find other people who feel the same way, and that's how you make friends. See? What? Did you hear that? You're yeah. kidding me. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is ridiculous! I once was blind, but now I see! W what the heck? How unfortunate. That kind of thing has plagued me for years. Jeez, that face. I've tried making friends, but whenever I would make conversation, it would die after a few minutes. And now, I finally found the answer. I see! I need to study more games, more TV shows! That's amazing. This guy's got such a one-track mind. No, you don't need to study them. Ah, I'm so ashamed of myself. If there was a hole somewhere around here, I'd totally go hide in it. <laughs> I let it get to me. I wasted all that time. I never saw the blind spot in my studies. I never studied pop culture. I'm a complete embarrassment. I'm not qualified to even be on the morals committee, let alone lead it. I, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Also, it's not moral. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Makoto. Professor? Hmm. You've taught me a most valuable lesson. You've earned my respect and the title of professor. Th that's gonna make things super awkward. Ha ha ha! There is no need to be modest, professor. I can't wait for your next lesson. And until then, I will strive to learn as much as I can on my own. Hmm. Well then, professor, by your leave. This guy... Without waiting for a reply, Taka ran off. I gotta say that we're hitting it off real quick, unlike everybody else. Professor? Although thinking about it, I didn't totally hate it. Yeah. Professor Makoto. Yeah, I like the ring of that. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that exact thing. It has a nice ring to it. Attentive influence. Alright. After we were done, I decided to head back to my room for a while. I love who just blew his mind on meeting number one. Hmm. You know, sometimes what students need is a meeting of the soul. Would you like to study with me? I took some time to study with Taka. We studied games. Yeah. And TV shows. I see. Hmm. I've been wanting to tell you something for a while now, Makoto. Makoto. You hear me? And now that it's just the two of us, this is the perfect time to confess. Uh, huh? <laughs> Listen, Makoto, your hoodie is awesome. <laughs> Thanks? You have really amazing fashion sense. Now, wearing a hoodie under your school uniform, you! your public morals are ruined. Just absolutely ruined. Sorry, did I do something wrong? The dress code was pretty flexible at my old school. You understand? Well, that's not the case here at Hope Speak Academy. As long as I live, I will protect our morals. 
take off that incredibly stylish hoodie this instant. <laughs> That's great. R right now? That's enough! Of course. Crap, Taka seems to be taking this really seriously. Well, I better come up with a good excuse or I might actually have to give him my hoodie. It's a makeshift hard hat. Yeah, what? It's a raincoat. I guess. It's a flashlight. No, it doesn't work. Oh. I don't want to get caught by surprise. Just hold on! What the hell? Then hard hat. Yeah. Yeah, should we You load? hear me? No, don't worry about it. Alright. So the hoodie will only protect your head. It's hardly a raincoat that's covered the rest of your body. Oh, okay. That's pretty dumb. Why is it just to get an umbrella? I don't know. Should, should I reload? It's up to you, but I don't think you need to. Eh. Well, we have to redo the previous talk. I think I don't feel like it. Alright, it's not a big bad. You right. understand? Oh, it just it just goes back. Alright. But this is the next best thing to a hard hat. A hard hat? Yeah, I mean, this school's really dangerous, you know? There's no telling what might happen. So, like, just in case, you know? Hmm. You may have a point there. I do. I totally do. Hmm. Well, if it's for your own safety, I suppose I can give you special permission just this once. You hear me? But the instant this school goes back to normal, you will hand over that amazingly cool hoodie. I love that. Yeah, you got it. Students these days are utterly ignorant of proper dress code. It's quite a pain. And frankly, I don't understand youth fashion these days anyway. You are youth. Listen to me! So this is a perfect opportunity for me to teach you all about how you should be dressing. Huh? Getting fashion advice from Taka is, well, let's just say unexpected. You understand? I wear this uniform 365 days a year, rain or shine, flood or drought, wind and hail and hurricane. Is that how you spell drought? I thought it was O-U-G-H-T. Because I thought A-U-G-H-T was like, take a draft of like, yeah. like, like, drink something. Huh. Even on your days off? Even on holidays? Count on School itself may observe holidays, but there's no such thing as a vacation for a student. So as long as I live the life of a student, I will always wear my uniform. I see. Hmm. Also, I have ten sets of my uniform, so I always have a clean one. There's nothing strange about that. I was wondering about that. When he said he wears it every day. Uh, no, I'd say wearing your uniform when you're not at school is totally strange. I better keep that to myself, though. <laughs> Trust me. Wearing the uniform every day helps keep you motivated. You should give it a shot. Taka's exactly the kind of guy I thought he was. Skill points. <laughs> yeah, wow, just one cleaner is slightly ahead of the curve. If I ever need two, that'll be it. Monokuma dolls, ready? Yeah, I got the one. Alright, here we go. Hmm, this thing looks just like me. Hmm? Wait, what's this on the back? But hold on! A zipper? And is that a voice I hear coming from inside? Oh god, help, help me! me. Someone, Someone help, help me! me. <laughs> I think I just heard something I don't think I wanted to hear. Uh. Hmm. Listen, is everyone present and accounted for? Nobody missing? Okay, just making sure. Well now. I guess I'll pretend I didn't hear anything. Oh god! Hey! Hey! Now, I'm almost afraid to ask, but what exactly makes this a doll? I got it! Wait, no, I know! You're thinking it's kind it's kind of adultish to have secrets, right? You guys! That's totally an elementary school way of thinking! Aren't you guys all high schoolers? Yes, indeed! So do it over! What? It's a total failure! But you did technically finish your assignment, so... What are you gonna do? I guess I'll give you some more tickets. That's so bizarre. So the next concept is... Heavy Arms Monokuma! Right here! Sweet. Hell yeah! Well, guess I have no choice but to show you how friggin' serious I can get!
You know, sometimes what students need is a. Oh, we did oh, read that one? Okay. That's right, studying. Okay. I see! Hmm. Maybe oh, wait, I was. We, we, we read that one, actually. Yeah. Does it mean you liked it? Oh, I'm weak, Makoto. Alright. So very weak. What happened? Haven't you realized? This school is missing something of utmost importance. Textbooks. Classes. I don't know, we're playing this mode. We found some textbooks. Oh, um, I can't say I really miss that stuff. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I'm freaking out. As we speak, we're being left in the dust by other students our age. I'm totally freaking out. Makoto, what should I do? If I keep involuntar involuntarily skipping classes like class like this, I'm gonna reach dunce status in no time. It's really not that big a deal, just calm down. You were always at the top of your class at the private school you used to go to, right? I mean, you're basically genius level. So even if you miss a few classes, it's not the same as just some ordinary kid ditching. Genius? Don't say that. Huh? Hmm. I'm no genius. I'm a normal person, just like anyone else. I'm from a middle class family, you know. Actually, they're not even middle class. You hear me? That's why I have to push so hard. I have to knock down that wall. It's not geniuses that change the world, it's ordinary people who make every effort they can. And to prove that, I have to keep on making effort after effort after effort. Got it. So don't call me a genius. Don't let me in with those lazy clods who don't put in any effort. Sorry, that's not what I was trying to do. No, I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. Hmm. But I only said that all, all that because you and me are the same. You and me, we're just normal people. We know what it means to have to make an effort. That's why I want you to know exactly how I feel. I understand. In other words. And that's why I'm so passionate about my work on the Morals Committee. I want to create an environment where everyone has the opportunity to give it everything they've got. You hear me? That's why I put all my blood, sweat, and tears into creating that kind of environment. I want everyone else to understand that too. In the end, you can't succeed if you don't try. Anyone who says differently is selling something. Got it. Effort is everything. That's the only way to fix anything in this world. And I have to prove that to all the ordinary people out there so they'll keep on trying. I have to become the ordinary man who can surpass any genius. Hmm. Those are the those are the feelings I carried with me when I entered Hope Speak Academy. But now that I'm trapped in here, I've been robbed of the opportunity to make that effort. So now what am I supposed to do? Taka. Sorry, Makoto. I didn't mean to make you listen to my pathetic complaining. No, it's not pathetic at all. I could totally understand why you'd be upset. You obviously feel really strongly about this. I really hope you don't give up hope and start to lose track of what you want to do. If you really believe that effort is what matters, then you can't give up, right? Because if you can't make that effort, then what do you have left? I think until you said that just now, I'd totally forgotten why what I was here for. The foundation of effort is the will to never give up. You're right. I have to try. No matter the situation. Even without classes, without assignments. I can just look back at what I've learned and already and reinforce those basic principles. Yeah, good idea. I'm glad we had this talk, Makoto. Wow, I feel so much better getting all that off my chest. As my way to say thanks, next time I buckle down for a study session, I'll make sure to invite you. You understand? Let's work together as fellow ordinary people to show those geniuses who's boss. His face filled with the unwavering confidence I was used to seeing from him. I feel like maybe I'm starting to understand him a little better, but I still think he might be a genius. Specifically, he's a genius when it comes to effort. Still, I did notice one thing. He seems to have a lot of hostility toward the idea of someone being a genius. Is there some reason he feels that way? Ooh. Steal patience! Alright. Weekend. Yes, indeed.
Mm. We did this one. Uh, yeah, right. I keep forgetting. The soul. I just noticed the soul. That's yeah. Alright, presents. I'm gonna change things up and give him mineral water. How bland. I see! Listen to me! Would you like to study with me, Makoto? Just the two of us. You and I. Oh, this is it! Come to my room. If there's anything you don't understand, I'm a very attentive teacher. Um, I don't think I need you to be all that attentive. But sure, you don't mind if I stop by? Hmm. Of course not! Okay, let's do it! With Taka leading the way, we headed to his room. Hey! Welcome, Makoto! You're the first guest I've invited to my room! I wonder what those posters on the wall say. They're probably motivational mm -hmm. or something. Hmm. Now that we're here, let me pose to you a question. A question? <laughs> Don't worry, no studying required. This is the most basic of basic questions. Very straightforward. How fast does the average load-bearing swallow beat its wings? Uh... Ha ha ha! This should be no challenge for you. Very easy, I assure you. Stop saying how easy it's gonna be. That just puts even more pressure on me. Okay, here we go. A very easy question. What country first established zero as a numerical concept? Well, it was the ancient Mayans, right? No. It wasn't? No, India. It was India? Mm -hmm. Wow. Then what would- They- because they have the concept of nothing. They're the first people who had the concept of nothing. Meaning something. Okay. Huh, got me there. So Asian country. Alright. It was India, wasn't it? <laughs> Count the math teacher know that question. Yeah, touche. Yeah. Correct. Good job, Makoto. I had faith in you, and you came through for me for that- for that very easy question. <laughs> you hear me? Seeing you get excited is getting me excited. Let's stack our efforts one on top of the other and show those self-centered geniuses jerks what for. Hey, um, Taka? What are you talking about? Yeah? <laughs> well, I've just noticed. You seem to really hate the idea of geniuses. Hmm. hmm. I guess I feel like they're just my sworn enemy, you know? Huh? Hmm. But you hit the nail on the head. You're pretty sharp. Wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> but why? There's someone. Someone I respect. Someone I hate. Someone I have to surpass. Because he was a genius. What? In other words... Toronosuke? Toronosuke Ishimaru. Do you recognize that name? He was my grandfather. He was once Prime Minister of Japan. Whoa. He was your grandpa? Hmm. He went from Minister of Foreign Affairs to Chief Cabinet Secretary and finally Prime Minister and all without any support network and only a high school degree. He was, simply, a genius. Everything he did, he did without any effort. He sounds like an amazing person. And he was your grandfather? Count on it! He was a genius. He'd never known failure. His success was unimaginable to any normal person. But because of that, he allowed himself to be controlled by naive emotions and got roped into a corruption scandal. He had no idea what the world of geniuses was really at like. At least, that's how I see it. Hmm. At that point, he fell just as fast as he had risen. And it wasn't just in politics. The business world had no use for him anymore, and he plummeted. The debt he left behind torments my family to this day. He died a few years ago. By the end, he wasn't speaking to anyone. So that might even be why... He's not quite middle class. He probably could have been super upper based on heritage alone, mm -hmm. but whatever happened to his grandfather must have really screwed him over. Despite his fame, his legacy, the only people who came to his funeral were his family members. That's honestly surprising for a prime minister. Mm -hmm. That's hard to imagine. You hear me? Some consider genius, genius fate's blessing. But I see it as a tragedy more than anything. Oh, it took me a, it took me a second. Yeah, to, yeah it, some consider that genius is a blessing of fate. That that was kind of hard to read. <laughs> consider genius fate's blessing what? <laughs> the tragedy of finding success without understanding the importance of effort. There's nothing worse than a nothing worse than a genius who trips and falls. On his own words. <laughs> Just like my grandfather. I guess and I'm calling myself a genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait a second. And that's why you hate the word genius? Count on it! 
My grandfather serves as an important lesson why you must never be deceived by the word like words like genius. Relying on my own effort, will re I will reach greater accomplishments than anything my grandfather ever did. You hear me? So we have to work hard to build a society where those who put in the effort are properly rewarded. Well, now I feel bad because he was killed like by a pawn of a surprisingly bad liar. Mm -hmm. I, I see. I can agree with him, but Taka and I aren't the same. I can't reach for those kinds of big dreams. <laughs> but you know, Makoto, I'm really happy. I figured this school would be full of geniuses. I mean, I thought everyone would be my enemy. I never imagined I'd meet someone here who I could share my story with. Whom? <laughs> I'm so lucky to have met you here. This kind of thing only happens once in a lifetime. But you were like surrounded by people in your school who presumably were not geniuses. Not to mention the other people here. Well, he meant people here. He thought would be all geniuses. I hope we can stay close and combine our efforts to shape things the way we want. Yeah, definitely. Got it. Okay, we have to keep on studying. I feel like I've come to understand Taka a lot better. I think we've finally become friends in the truest sense of the word. Skill points. After lots of studying, I went back to my room. Okay. Can I... I, I have to select the option. Who should I talk to? All right, so as a refresher here, we are done with everyone except for Kyoko and Byakuya. This ought to be quite interesting, but for now, it is time to stop the installment.